back in 2020, the Tauranga City Council was replaced by a commission. This was done, this was ordered by the then Minister of Local Government, Nanaya Mahuta, shortly after she and the Labour Party won the first ever one-party majority in MMP. Mahuta wrote to the council in early December 2020, and basically she expressed that it was her intention to replace them with a commission due to a number of governance problems amongst the elected representatives. Now, the minister decided that the council's response to this was just not sufficient, and it didn't provide any evidence or um, it didn't provide any confidence that they were able to actually overcome these issues. And as such, she decided to go through with it and she just decided, hey, look, you elected representatives, you're gone, I'm putting in my own people. And well, that was that. Originally, the commission was only supposed to be in place until 2022, uh, when the triennial local authority elections came around. However, the minister, again, decided to maintain the commission and avoid a change in policy direction. The Commission believed that under a return to elected democracy, a change in strategic direction may jeopardise relationships the Commission has established with public and private funding contributors. It would also result in an inability to deliver on planned projects within Tauranga City and across the wider region. In short, the then Minister of Local Government opted to retain an unelected Commission because she agreed with the policy direction. Hypothetically, what if the people in Tauranga oppose projects being delivered in the city? Nanaya Mahuta believes that doesn't matter. It's what she and the commission want that matters the most. Of course, these commissions are, commissioners are on a very healthy several hundred thousand dollar salary, and so they're probably very keen to remain in the position, irrespective of the actual value of whatever they're doing. So, in short, Tauranga wasn't given the opportunity to democratically elect their representatives in 2022 like the rest of the country, no. Instead, their representatives dictated to them. And irrespective of whether they agreed or not, the commission, the commission remained, and lo and behold, here we are. Now next year, the local government elections are happening all over the country again. But like 2022, Todonga is not going to be involved. Now, the reason they're not going to be involved is because their local government elections are in July this year. They're having them now instead of waiting an extra year. And then in four years from now, when it comes around to the next run of local government elections, they will rejoin the cycle and, you know, having elections in alignment with everyone else. So here is the big question. Will those elected do a better job than their predecessors? Will Todonga be begging for a government appointed <laughs> a government appointed commission in the future will they say hey look you guys can start dictating to us who who governs us because uh, whoever we've just elected isn't working out again who knows perhaps but here is the big question will those who are elected this time around do a better job than their predecessors will they do a better job than the commission well a big part of that is is the mayor going to be competent whoever they elect as mayor are they going to be able to do the job that needs to be done are they going to be able to get the council working despite the fact they might have differences in policy objectives. Now, the race for mayor is always the highlight, the headline act of any local election. And, and one particular candidate in Tauranga has caught my eye. But they haven't caught my eye for the right reasons. Rhea Hall, a singer-songwriter, born and raised in Tauranga, done a lot of great things, has shown her hat in the ring. And she's proclaimed that it's time for a change. On that point, I wholeheartedly agree. However, change for the sake of change isn't necessarily a good thing. And Hall is known as a quote-unquote tireless advocate for social justice, indigenous rights, and environmental sustainability. That aside, having read materials related specifically to her mayoralty bid, her vision and, and this change she speaks of, I've found it rather uninspiring. I can't identify anything particularly radical or concerning, and it does suggest that she's approaching this opportunity with a vision. Unfortunately, it's only a vision, and nothing but a vision. I can't see a single policy outlining how she intends to achieve all of her outlined priorities. For example, she intends to govern with holistic economic management. Through good management and clear leadership, we don't have to choose between well-being for people and the environment, 
and a prosperous economy. That is all well and good. But how do you plan on achieving all of that? At this point, holistic is just a buzzword. And in practice, what policy, be it at the local or national level, is ever implemented in a holistic way? I highly doubt that those who use it even know what it means. From what I can see, the rest of the priorities Rhea Hall has outlined thus far are, well, no more substantive than the first one. And there certainly doesn't appear to be any specific plan to achieve them. However, with all this being said, it isn't even the lack of substance that piqued my interest, nor the fact that she's a singer-songwriter. Couldn't care less. What I find to be the most bizarre and arguably damning thing about Rhea Hall's candidacy is who she chose as her campaign manager. Rhea, in what is arguably the most important decision she will make in the pre-election stage, has shown she has terrible judgment. And to any voters that may very well see who she has appointed as her candidate, it may turn them off immediately. It may suggest to them, this woman hasn't thought through anything. If this is the kind of judgment she's going to make as the mayor, let's stare well clear of that. So who was this choice for campaign manager? Rhea decided that in one of the first things she does, the best choice, or the choice that she would settle for, was disgraced former member of parliament, former minister of justice, Kitty Allen. Now, please don't get this twisted. I have no issue with Kitty Allen being afforded the opportunity by Rhea Hall to be a campaign manager. That is up to Rhea Hall. But someone currently before the courts on criminal charges is probably not the person you want to be running your campaign if you're trying to become mayor. It just isn't the right look. Now, if we get a few years down the line, it's all kind of gone under the bridge, the consequences, the justice has been served, whatever, I don't really care. You know, she's allowed to move on with her life after making mistakes, and she's allowed to be afforded opportunities by those who want to give them to her. However, right now, she is still before the courts on criminal charges. That is a fact. And if Rhea Hall thinks it's the right decision to select her as her campaign manager, that suggests a severe lack of judgment. Now, it's not just the fact that she drove drunk, crashed her car, and then resisted arrest. No. She just so happens to play a pivotal role in the worst government in recent history as well. Hell, you could make an argument that it was the worst government in New Zealand's history. But all in all, what does this say about Rhea? One could argue that she is just empathetic, and she is happy to give Kitty, Kitty Allen an important role in the beginning of her political career, all because Kitty has that experience. Conversely, it suggests an extreme lack of judgment and experience making important decisions. And it's certainly not helped by the fact that as of right now, she hasn't provided much substance in her bid for mayor of Toto. 